Welcome to Sideways TV, everybody. I'm going to hand the mic to Andy at this stage. <laughs> How Hello. you doing, matey? So, uh, yeah, look, we're here at Paragon Porsche. We're a few hours early, it's fair to say, for a podcast we're recording later today. So we thought, well, off uh, the back of a recent video we did, trial in a couple of cars, we thought, well, we're going to roll with that again, basically. And we are spoilt for stock. You basically raised a great point, Andy, looking at a couple of 997s, which you can see behind us. What's the difference, really, between like a, a, an S and a GTS? Yeah, educate me on... Why is it worth spending the extra, I guess? Okay. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Well, challenge accepted. Let's see how we get on. We're just going to run out in the 4S first of all. So it's 997 Gen 2, so the first generation of the DFI, direct fuel injection era. The 4S is wide-bodied. All GTSs are wide-bodied. So we're kind of looking to the every man and woman. They kind of look fairly similar. Mm. But as Andy, you've rightly pointed out, there's a, a bit of a kick on in price. So why should maybe someone consider a GTS over the other is a, is, a, is a great question. It's a great question. So we'll dive in and do that. We'll run out on this lovely Guards Red example first just to get acquainted with the 997.2 platform. And then we'll step into the C4 GTS, so both all-wheel drive, and, uh, and see, see what the difference is. Sounds good. Oh, that sounds lovely, 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 lovely. Now you might be wondering why Andy has a big blue mic. Well, this is because our second lapel mics, like the one I'm wearing, failed on arrival. So we may do with the equipment we had, even if it meant we brought a literal meaning to the term radio roadshow, roll VT. So it's worth kind of pointing out for people watching at home that like 997.2, for many is seen as kind of that sweet spot really in terms of modernity versus tradition. Yeah. There's definitely more of an argument these days creeping in for 991.1 just in terms of where the 992 has got in terms of size but 997 as we've said previously on the channel last kind of traditional 911 layout no big centre console separating us here um, no rear active steering or anything like that rear axle steering sorry on the on the, these cars so it's the it's the last traditional 911 really but with a nice layer of refinement thrown in as well yep. so this is a s4 c4s yep so uh with it being four wheel drive it's wider bodied oh yes of course 40 so same body as the gt same body as the GTS, yeah. yeah, we'll come to that. So that's 44 millimetres wider than the Carrera and the Carrera S, which are rear-wheel drive. Yeah. It's worth pointing out with the four-wheel drive, so it's a viscous coupling system tried and tested for decades on all-wheel drive 911s. It is predominantly rear-wheel drive. It's just variable in terms of how much torque is sent to the yeah. front axle. But really, the whole idea was, and I think it does it very well, is gives great traction whilst not robbing it of kind of its 911 character yeah. yeah i'm trying to think if i've i've driven a 997 four-wheel drive i don't think i have okay. so it will be yeah, an interesting opportunity to do so and feel see if i can feel that gear shift already on that Ooh, the, the 997 six speed is revered and rightly so because it's a beautiful beautiful gearbox um just nice, short, sharp, crisp, precise. And obviously with the 991, when it went to seven speed, they basically spent 12 years since trying to perfect it. Yeah. Of course, with the Carrera T now, they've ditched that seven speed yeah, anyway. So we're back to where we started. But like this just was perfect as is. It didn't need any engineering to yeah. kind of rescue it. You know, it's just a lovely... Bloody emissions. I know, yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. Just a, a lovely, crisp, lovely, crisp short precise throw there's so much to love about it do you think that's a step on from the 996 oh uh, yeah without a it doubt is, yeah. yeah and actually it's a popular mod a lot of 996s will just simply fit the 997 shift because it's shorter okay so c4s so all-wheel drive wider bodied with it being the s model you get the bigger brakes the big red brakes yep. which work really nice on a guards red car 380 mm -hmm. brake horse 310 new meters of torque at 4400 rpm so a nice, brisk, kind of quite talky motor, but you would have heard, hopefully, starting this, it sounded wonderful. Yeah. Really, really nice sound. I have to say, well, whoever spec this car knew, absolutely, tip my hat to you, because this is a lovely spec. Really, really nice. It's a nice spec, isn't it? We've got um, full leather. 
full leather dash, sport um, 997, obviously the sport seats, uh, sport hard backed as well, colour coded. I actually don't mind this transmission tunnel. Usually yeah. I have a thing that it's do not paint the, cent, uh, the transmission tunnel the same as the outside. Yeah. I just don't really like bringing the outside, or out, I don't like bringing outside paint in. I just think it shouldn't be in an interior. But I don't know why, because I'm contradicting my usual thoughts, but I actually quite like this. I like it. I think I think you're wrong there. I think that looks good. The point is, this is really well specced, but in order to get this spec, it would have cost a hell of a lot in yeah. options. So brand new, uh, a base C4S was 73 grand. And I would guess, with everything that's on here, you've got chrono as well with the clock, you've got bows as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of options going on. I, I, would, I would guess there's 20 grand in options from the time. If you go 73, and I'm guessing here, but 73 plus 20 in options, so you're looking at 93 grand new, it's currently up at Paragon for 47, which is half yeah. its original value. What's your like, initial thoughts then on 997 Gen 2 package and everything? trying to think what 997 I, I test drove a 997 when they first came out which would have been a dot two okay uh, yeah 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 a friend um took me to i think it was uh paul sheffield i think and we test drove a, a 997.2 then it was a white one and we did launch control with pdk <laughs> <laughs> um and i've been in a 997.1 cab but i think other than yeah, GT3. I think that's all that I've been in. Okay. It feels a very complete package. It feels very composed. feels very solid. There's no you know, rattles or anything. But doesn't it just soak up the road does, really yeah. nicely, yeah. you know? This is not uncomfortable by any stretch of the imagination. No. Time then for Andy to take to the wheel. Very composed, doesn't it? What does this the old sport exhaust button do on these? Does it do much different? Oh yeah, it does sound a bit um, deeper, doesn't it? And I guess that comes GTS, that's always there. Yeah. Where on the S, that was an option. Yeah, yeah this covers B roads very nicely. It's gonna be interesting getting into that GTS and feeling what, what feels extra about it. That was the C4S, but let's see how the GTS differs. First impressions are not a huge difference in here to, okay, yeah. to the S, okay. because that was quite highly spec S, wasn't it? Yes. So as we said, you know, full leather dash, optional extra, um, chrono, optional extra, sports seats, optional extra. Yeah. So it had lots of extras on that. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're selling the C4S well, Andy B. Well, the, yeah, that, said, yeah. yeah. research into pricing 73 grand new on the c4s round about 20 grand of options i would guess yeah. this new 997 uh, gts 76 so there's a three grand difference i think there's then a little bit yeah. more as a kick on for it being a c4 rather than c2 you, yeah. so you know if you consider the cost of the power kit new is about eight grand Basically, for what you could spend on the power kit on the C4S, you could just get a 997 GTS. Yes, yeah. And with all of that, you get everything else as standard. So, Sport PASM, you get Sport Chrono, you get Porsche Sport Exhaust. If you spec PDK, which this has, with the Chrono Pack, you then get launch control as well. Yeah. You get like GTS spec. Uh, trinkets which is like yeah black accents all over the car and you get a wide body uh, regardless of whether you get yeah. rear wheel drive or four wheel drive yes. so yes yeah, so the idea is you just get more you've also got center lock wheels on this which you, yes. you can't you cannot spec on the c4s let's just drop it down a couple of cogs actually i'm just going to stick that into yes which feels a million times better so again, this is like the nuances that I think you just can't tell on the spec sheet. But to my mind, the steering is better on this already. On the GTS, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Just feels a little bit more fluid. We'll talk about the power kit. So the power kit, as I said, like big option, unless you're buying the GTS where it's standard spec. But it gets you an extra twenty-three horsepower. But again, it's not just 
what you know because you go well, 23 horsepower for the cost new is not a lot but again there's differences just with the way that power is fed yeah. to me i can feel that from the passenger seat it feels yeah. more i found in the um s like when i put my foot down there was a little bit of a a little bit of a especially you lower rpm and you put your foot down it feel felt like it took quite a while for that power to then come in and the yeah. revs to go around where this feels much quicker to go up obviously we've got a different gearbox yeah. but it's just punchier though and again yeah. i've said before i really do just want to do a video on this channel about the power kit because they are i think a real work of art i'm obviously a little bit biased because the anniversary's got it so yeah. i've kind of got a bit used to it but uh, 23 horsepower there is a slight increase in torque can't remember what that is so i'll drop that in the notes um but that maximum torque is a couple of hundred rpm sooner mm -hmm. but the power is slightly more peakier so i think what you get really is just a really nice all-round experience you get like really good low down throttle openings you get a really punchy mid-range yeah but then it's really rewarding to take that needle right the way around right to the red paint and so it's just it just feels like a really flat six on steroids in many ways yeah. really characterful the sport chassis on this standard is a 10 mil drop in ride height yeah you also get and i've not mentioned revised bumpers front and rear as well okay. so you've got cloaked within that turbo body you've got these yeah like bespoke bumpers specific gts bumpers. yes okay. yeah yeah it's all adding up to quite quite a lot of extras yeah. you're getting isn't it definitely On definitely face value when you first see the cars you're like oh, what's the difference yeah but, yeah yeah 100 yeah. and and this is the thing like with the 997 generation it was a genuine like run out special i'll tell you what as well so earlier in the year i did a 997 gts head-to-head -head manual vpdk with yeah. two cars from paragon and i absolutely loved them the manual car particularly i loved it and what are we in now? Another like eight months down the line. Yeah. And it just unlocks. I don't know, they're just driving it again. It's just like, ah, oh, these are really, to me, they feel they feel special. I'd probably, I'd want, I'd want to do something with the exhaust just to give a little bit more pep or res resonance is, yeah. the, is, the, is the word for me. But just as an all-round package, I just think these cars are awesome. And it, those cars earlier in the year were rear-wheel drive. The only difference was the gearbox. It's nice to drive the all-wheel drive equivalent and for it to be, to my mind, still a really special drive. Yes. Do, you, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah, it's just a bit more, a bit more composed than that C4S is, you know, just naturally easier at carrying speed through the corners. Maybe the suspension being different. I was expecting a, a harsher ride, but I'm not feeling that at all. No, it's all right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I said fluidity was the word for the steering I think the whole package just dials in for that for me I think that is the word it's just I think this just is better at carrying speed I'm certain the steering is different as well I'm yeah. certain yeah this is just really nice I like it Andy B I like it I like it I like it the other thing I'll say is, again, like with these, they've never really dipped below list price, not no. not majorly, yeah. and that's so rare for, a, as I said previously, for a car with Carrera on the back. With the GTS, it's a bit more of a proven value prospect. Definitely. If that's in, yeah, if that's yeah. important. One hundred percent agree with you on that. I know that's a higher mileage car. This is thirty thousand. That's uh, sixty-eight thousand. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that probably, you know, that adds to the the the, the price difference. Mm -hmm. Uh, quite significantly but it kind of highlights how well these have um, yeah their value has, has stayed up yeah. in comparison to an S definitely and I guess that's going to continue into the into the future um, yeah, that, that GTS moniker that really kind of I don't like to talk values but it kind of it means something it does yeah and then it was Andy's turn for some seat time before we headed back to base to discuss our findings. It definitely feels um, talkier. Yes, yeah. You know, 
that sort of 2,000 to 4,000, I felt quite, there wasn't much going on there in the other car in the S. That makes quite a difference, that power kit, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. I see what you mean about the steering as well. I'm not seeing a downside to the four-wheel drive. It doesn't, yeah, this doesn't feel four-wheel no. four -wheel drive. I was saying earlier, when I was in the passenger seat about the PDK, saying that I it felt it suited it from the passenger seat and I feel the same from the, really, yeah. from the driver's seat, yeah. Um, I think it, it's, a, it's a good match. Yeah. What do you reckon this wheel? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You were saying that the, you thought the travel was quite big on the paddles, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not until you drive like a 992. Okay. Where it's like clicking a PlayStation console button. There's just like, it really is click rather than pull. Yeah. That makes sense, you know. But if you're jumping straight into this, so it's your first experience of PDK, you wouldn't think that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Oh, Ooh. yes. Traction for days. Oh, isn't it? Traction for days. Absolutely lovely. Everything's just right, isn't it? The analogue gauges, the the feel of everything, the... Yeah. Oh, I just said it's, it works for me. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. in. Yeah, you're in. I'll call Mark now. <laughs> so... <laughs> That was super interesting, again. Enlightening, I'd say. That C4S is probably one of the best spec yeah. 997 C4Ss around, really. You know, yeah. like, as I said, set of ceramics away from being almost like a press car. It's that well spec. Yeah. So, in some ways, it's not a fair test, but in other ways, it is. Because even that best spec C4S, there's still a, a, a gap and a, and a step up to that GTS. Yeah, in, in monetary circumstance, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Why, is, why, why is it that... When, when you look at it, you could almost say that that S is GTS spec, but why is the GTS mm. worth so much more? Mm. Well, I think that gap is there in performance as well. Agreed, and yeah. I, I would say almost with like with every little bit, and I know one's manual and one's PDK, but we're not focusing on the gearbox, are we? There's like just a decent, I would put it at 20%. Yeah. 20% on in everything. Engine so much more characterful kind of described Agreed. it in, in the video but it, it really is more than the sum of its parts and just that extra 23 horsepower and 30 newton meters of torque the way it goes down the road the way it corners the steering there's just fluidity was the word i was getting on the drive yeah absolutely agree with that in all ways it just feels punchier in tune with you mm. i don't know how yeah they're clever bloody porsche engineers aren't they <laughs> they always seem to you know you look at the spec sheet and you think well it's not much different but when when you actually feel it it feels yeah, it's, it's like Porsche, Porsche horsepower, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Always more than the advertised. 100%, 100%. Yeah. I think the exercise was also really good because, and, and that C4S is exceptional over there. But like, I've seen sometimes among enthusiasts when you have a really well-spec C2S or C4S, you say it's pretty much GTS spec. I can't even say that about my anniversary a little bit. But you, you, you just can't replicate a GTS. Yeah. And, and there is a clear definition, I think, between a very, very good C4S that that is and, and a GTS. There, there definitely is that gap. Yeah. Just all those nuances and touch points and little one percenters, as we've said before, yeah. that make the, make the difference. They all add up. Mm -hmm. They all add mm -hmm. up, definitely. I, I do also, I don't know whether I'm just getting old or out of touch, I don't know, but I, I feel like that 997 is too cheap. If you, if you if you look at where the price of modern cars now 992s yeah. and like a base Carrera being a hundred grand and that red one by the way has done sixty eight thousand miles yeah. I think but again like you said no squeaks rattles nothing it feels really nice to drive the interior is held up really well and that is a sub fifty k car it feels yeah. plenty fast enough and I almost feel relative to the inflated cost of modern Porsche metal yes yeah. It's ludicrously cheap. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, wonderful things, both of them. Mm. But the GTS definitely gets the gets the, the mark, the knot for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, as I said earlier, when we were out on the road, you know, even if you take away the the value aspect of it, it's still just so much more than the sum of its parts. Okay, interesting. Because uh, the, the the whole point of this video was for you to answer the question. So yeah. It's almost like my thoughts are irrelevant really so 
you feel that that is justified with the, with the monetary step up from one to the other? I do. I think, uh, yeah, I think the answer is, yes, it's worth the extra. Yeah. That's the... That's the nutshell. That's the nutshell, isn't it? If you, yeah, if you're thinking, you know, I mean, there's always going to be a case where you can't afford the extra, but if you can afford the extra and you're, oh, should I go for this or should I go for that? Then I, th yeah, my, my thought is the GTS is a good buy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And if you, like you said, you perhaps haven't quite got that outlay to get into like mid 60s for, for, for one of those, a C4S is still a really good a really good car, a really good 911, fantastic alternative. Yeah, absolutely. So, thanks to the guys at Paragon for giving us some seat time in the C4S and the GTS. Both of the cars are on the Nunworks Marketplace where you get 12-month warranty as well. Um, that's kind of it, I guess. We'll see you soon. See you soon.